Hi, I'm Kinkas and I'm a Synth DIY guy and welcome to today's video, which is the demo and build guide for the Atto V project CDVCA, which is a really interesting and unique module that uh, at first glance looks like just a VCA, but it's actually a VCA based on D-class amplification circuit. Now I'm not super versed in the technical aspects of this, so I'm gonna just read to you from the documentation. So the CD VCA or Class D VCA is a new kind of VCA based on an entirely novel concept that is inspired from Class D amplification technology. This is not a transparent VCA and brings a lot of character to the sound. It's the first VCA that tracks one volt per octave. The concept is the input signal is turned into an ultrasonic pulse width modulation signal at around 34 kilohertz. The pulse width modulation is scaled to the desired amplitude and then filtered back down to the original signal. The twist is that the pulse width modulation frequency can be lowered down into the audio spectrum and the frequency can be controlled via its one volt per octave input, allowing for crazy wave shaping that tracks your melodies. The drive controls an innovative clipping method that does not rely on overdriving any circuitry and therefore results in distortions with a very defined character. The signal then goes into a one pole VCF tone circuit that allows to keep things under some amount of control as the harmonics produced by this module can be very aggressive. With no input, the module generates a simple square wave and therefore can be used as a simple synth voice. You can also apply pulse width modulation to it by sending CV into the audio input when you're using it as its own synth voice. By the way, I built this module. You can watch me build it and follow along. Just click on uh, the index below. But we're going to actually start by demonstrating its sound and what it can do. So if you're not interested in that, you just want to watch me build it, you can skip ahead. But in the meantime, let's have a little fun with it, okay? So, so let's start by just seeing its operation as a regular VCA, right? So I'm sending it a, the core output from my Generate 3 module here, right? And as I turn up the VCA knob here, already we can hear it. See, I have the frequency all the way up, drive all the way down, and filtering all the way up. So let's just listen to this as I drive it. Indeed, it's very interesting drive sound. I can filter that a bit, right? But let's give it some movement. I'm going to use the step 8 here to sequence. I'm going to trigger a clock. As I drive it, how it changes the character so much. Now let's use the VCA functionality, right? I have a contour one acting as an envelope generator here. I'm gonna send that to the VCA input here. Very cool. Very interesting sound. Definitely not a run of the mill vanilla VCA here. So here's the drive. Now I can modulate the drive too. For example, if I take an output of my filter 8 here as an LFO. the drive knob becomes an attenuator. Very cool. I can do the same with the uh, filtering if I want. So here's the VCF input. In fact, I can use audio rate modulation there. Ah, 
did some cool FM kind of results that way. Let's bring it back to LFO here. Back into the drive. Our sequence a little bit. By the way, I'm not using a quantized sequencer, I'm just using voltages that I find by just twiddling these faders here. Not worried about being in any key or scale. Let's play around with the frequency. This is where the rub is. This is what makes this really unique and interesting. With this frequency up at the top, it's hypersonic, so it's just acting as a D-class amplifier, but we have control over this frequency. So as we bring it down, we start getting almost this aliasing kind of a sound. Hear that? Let's turn the drive down so we can really focus on that sound. It's almost like a ring modulator. All right. Now, since I've calibrated this to one volt per octave, I can actually take the the output of our sequencer here and we'll split it, we'll use the multiple and we can take one output to the frequency input here of the CDVCA the other one to our oscillator again so now the timbre remains consistent because we're tracking that frequency To have the filtering here. Okay, see, this is with the filter open. It can get quite harsh. So this allows, allows us to tame it quite a bit. Also, the filter can act almost like a low pass gate. Right? In fact, I can send our VCA, send our envelope generator to another multiple here. and control both the filtering and the VCA with the same envelope and that'll give us a kind of a low pass gate effect. Super percussive, isn't it? Let's make this a little faster. Maybe we want to attenuate that CV that's going into the, the filtering and that'll allow us to have a little more control over the timbre. Cool. Wow, this sounds super nice. And again, I can change the relationship between the internal oscillator frequency and the input oscillator frequency, right? And I can fiddle with the drive.
Now let's see what happens if instead of using the our same sequence, we use an LFO on that frequency internal internal frequency there. Let's turn the drive down. Ah, listen to that. So that's going from that hypersonic down into audible audio rate. And now, why don't, why don't we play around with audio rate modulation of that internal frequency? Very cool. Now, here's another idea. Let's modulate our filter 8 LFO with the sequence. And that's FMing the internal oscillator of the CDVCA. The little drive. The drive kind of nulls out the uh, the effect of the internal oscillator. But we do get a timbre change when we change the center here. Very cool. Let's bring that out again. Ooh, listen to that. I love it when I bring the VCA down while modulating both the VCF and the VCA with an envelope generator. Sounds super plucky and percussive. And you can find the sweet spot for that frequency knob too, as well as the drive. Yeah, some very percussive sounds. How about we use, instead of the triangle wave here from the Generate 3, let's use the full output, where we can create more interesting waveforms that include the fundamental, the even harmonics, and the odd harmonics. So let's uh, bring the filter up, frequency up, no drive, and just uh, so just so we can hear what this waveform actually sounds like. Yeah, something like this. Sounds kind of square wavy, right? And now let's play around. Haha, <laughs> cool. Let's go back to sending Volt Per Octave to the frequency input here. Bassier, pluck here, darker, cleaner, more saturated. Yeah, adding VCA makes it have more of a sustain. Moving it makes it super plucky. Wow, I'm loving this module. This is going to be in my performance case for sure as part of my main plucky voice. Listen to that, super percussive. Let's make the envelope tighter. Change up the sequence again, just so it doesn't get boring. A little longer envelope. Clangorous. Right there. 
Yeah, bring up the drive, it loses the clangory, clangoriness. Cool. And turning up the VCA. It makes it less plucky. I definitely like I like it in the center here. Up on the filter up gives you more high harmonics. Wow, what a cool device, really. Now, here's the thing. You can also use it as its own little voice, right? Because the uh, oscillator in there actually goes down to audible rate. So let's remove, I just removed the generate three oscillator from the input, and we're just gonna use its own built-in oscillator. Okay, so let's start the clock again. All right, so this is just the CDVCA all by itself. All right, so we've got the filter here. Maybe we can send something to the filter, like an LFO to the filter. Oh no, that's the VCA. The filter to come from maybe, maybe triangle wave here from the middle path. Is the drive. See, the drive seems to affect the pulse width. And uh, I'm told that you can also affect the pulse width by sending a CV to the input, right? So let's bring this. Yeah. So now we're modulating the pulse width by sending an LFO to the audio input of the module. Right? Which of course, if I turn it into audio rate, then it'll just be the audio input again, see? And we get into clangorous territory again. Let's bring it back to LFO here. Yep, we're definitely affecting the pulse width. In fact, let's make it all one note. We can really hear that, that pulse width change there. Now, I can also do that by sending it to the drive. You get even more radical pulse width in the drive input there. Very cool. So this is using it as its own little synth voice. All right, I don't wanna to do too long a demo. There's other really in-depth demos of this module online. I just wanted to give you my take on it and show you some fun things to do with it. And uh, that'll be it for the demo right now. And uh, stay tuned, because now I'm gonna show you how to build the module and then calibrate it. All right, don't go anywhere. All right, so here's the kit. It's really easy to build because all of the SND components are already pre-soldered onto the PCB. So all you have to really assemble are the panel components. Here's the PCB and the panel. I will start with the power connector. So just slip it on, prop the board up, and start by soldering a single pin. Make sure it's straight, and then continue with all the other ones. Okay, so now let's move on to the potentiometers. Keep track of the values. One of them is 10K, all the others are 100 and the jacks. As you can see, all the ground lugs 
are facing upward. Now let's plug in these trim pots. The trim pots don't really stay on very well, so we need to twist out those legs on the bottom there to keep them nice and flush to the board. Do the same to the other one. And the LEDs, make sure they are oriented correctly. The longer leg is positive, and that's indicated on the silk screen as well and slip on the panel. Now, in order to keep the panel in place, we're going to finger tighten the nuts. That'll just help line up all of the components before we solder them. Now, I didn't have masking tape to hold the LEDs in place, so I just used my fingers and twisted out the legs and solder it all up. Here, I have started already tightening the nuts and putting on knobs, but you should probably do what the manual says, which is to run some tests on the module first, because if you do have to troubleshoot, it'll be easier to remove the panel if the knobs aren't on, because they're pretty tight. But I didn't do that. I just finished building the whole thing, and uh, I was lucky. I just need to trim those leads. No troubleshooting was needed. But it really is such a simple build that it's likely that you'd get anything wrong. Pretty good for beginners. And it sounds amazing. All right, let's, uh, let's calibrate this bad boy. Plugged it in here. And there are two trim pots you've seen during the build. One of them says D percentage, which is the pulse width. right? And the other one is volt per octave. So you can use it as a voice with accurate, uh, pretty accurate volt per octave tracking. So first thing we're gonna do is have a look at the manual, what it says. There are three different methods for calibrating the pulse width modulation. One is with a multimeter in duty cycle mode, which uh, I could do, I do have a multimeter. The other is with a computer oscilloscope application and a sound card which I could probably also do, but I have the Mordex data here. So I'm gonna use the method number two, which is just to use an oscilloscope, right? So we need to use test point two on the back of the PCB. That's this right here. Let's just take the output right here. We've already connected ground via the sleeve of this. We can now enable channel two here. Yeah, this is looking like pretty square, pretty much 50% duty cycle there. And that's what we want. Wider on top, narrower on the bottom. Yeah, see, looks about right. Maybe the duty cycle measurement on a multimeter would be even more accurate, but I think this is probably good enough. We don't have to go crazy with this. I'm sure it'll sound great just as it is. Now, for the volt per octave calibration, we can use the tuner function on Mardex data here. So let's just choose the tuner here. There we go. And uh, let's see. The manual says the CDVC is not designed to be an accurate oscillator. The tracking will not be perfect over the whole range, and it is not temperature compensated, so it will drift over time. So knowing that, we can use one of many different tools, a multimeter in frequency mode, a tuner, a computer with a tuner application and, or an oscilloscope. 
So the procedure is to power the module using a URAC power supply, leave it connected for two to three minutes. We've already done that for everything to warm up and be stable. Set the frequency VCA and VCF fully clockwise. Oh, so we want the frequency fully clockwise? Wow, okay. And drive counterclockwise, All right, we've got that. Now there's an optional step to save time here, and that is to generate a minus one volt source. Okay, I'm just gonna grab tip and sleeve of a jack here. So the sleeve is ground and the tip is what we're gonna measure. And we're gonna stick this into my select two over here, and we're gonna find minus one volt. I think that's good enough, eh? Minus 0.999. That's, that's gonna be as close as I'll probably get. So we're gonna plug this in to the frequency input jack. Okay, now we'll measure the voltage at test point one. We're supposed to measure 0.195 volts at this point. You can probably just grab a sleeve here of any of these jacks for ground. Go and grab the actual test point itself with my alligator clip here. Well, that's pretty close right there, right? We're supposed to measure 0.195 and we're measuring 0.19. So I just need to turn that trim butt a little bit, this trim butt right here, until we get a 95 there. Goes. Yep, oh point one nine five zero. Now we'll connect it to the tuner. We're gonna use the output jack right here. And now we're supposed to send three volts, so let's use the meter again to measure three volts coming out of the select two module. All right, so now I'll turn this until we see three volts in the multimeter. Get in there, yeah, there we go. That's pretty darn close right there. So that's three volts. Now we have to send those three volts into the frequency. All right, and now we're supposed to tune it to a C5. Just gotta bring it down a little bit. Yeah, that's C5. Okay. Now it says send one volt into the frequency and adjust the trimmer. So that's a C3. Okay, so we've got C5 now and we'll get it to where it's one volt. There it is. Now we'll stick that back into the frequency input of the CDVCA and uh, that's supposed to read C3 so we need to adjust the trimmer so we see a C3 so let's go C sharp and C3 all right and that ladies and gentlemen concludes the calibration procedure for now, I mean, if we notice that it's not really tuning very well, we can probably try it in a more conventional way using keyboard and the tuner. So this was using the manual's save time routine for tuning this module. That's it for this. I hope you liked the video. Hope you had fun building yours or if you didn't, just enjoyed the demonstration. And uh, I'll see you soon and stay noisy.